I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. In today's vlog, I am going to be talking a bit about taking commissions. Taking commissions is a way that a lot of artists make the majority of their income, whether that be painting portraits or specific styled landscapes or whatever it is. But along with that, there comes a bit of stress in having to provide exactly what the client wants and making sure that they're happy. So I thought I would talk today a bit about some of the things that you can do to make that process go as smooth as possible. Throughout your art career, you are going to have people that want you to paint a custom painting of their dog or of a family member or whatever it is. Before you really get started on advertising that and charging a fee for that, I recommend doing a few things first. A big, big thing that I hear artists complain about is that they paint something for somebody, say it's their dog, and the client continuously asks for different changes to be made. The fur needs to be fluffier, the ears need to be larger, smaller, the eyes are too big, all kinds of different things. You will continuously hear these sorts of complaints and it's usually with people who are just getting started in portraits. One of the ways that you can avoid this problem is before you ever, ever take a commission, have 10 to 15 pieces at least done as samples of your work. Of whatever style you're going to be painting, if you're going to be doing pet portraits, paint 10 to 15 dogs or cats or whatever it is. If you're doing people, 10 to 15 people. Any style that you're going to be working on, 10 to 15 paintings in that style of that subject matter. And the reason for this, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, I have to paint 10 to 15 things and not sell them. People need to know exactly what to expect from you. If they know what to expect, you're not as likely to run into problems where, where clients are coming back and saying, I don't like how you painted this. This needs to be adjusted. This needs to be changed. Doing all of those samples are going to let them know exactly what they're getting from you. And you can sell those 10 to 15 paintings, but the nice thing is when you sell something that's already done, you don't have to go back and make changes for the person. They know what they're buying right up front. So get those samples done. Make sure people know what it is they're going to get from you. The other thing in doing this, this gives you an idea of how long it's going to take you to complete a piece. One of the things that you've got to be able to, to give people when they hire you is an estimate on how long this process will take. So now you've got your samples. You know how long it'll take you to paint something. People have a general idea of what they can expect from you. You want to clearly spell out how long it's going to take you to finish a painting. Is it going to take three weeks to paint it, another month to dry, another week for shipping time? You need to have a general idea. Now I always recommend overshoot your time by a week or two weeks. So if something comes up, family drama, whatever, you're covered and you're not, that person's not sitting by the mailbox wondering where their painting is, especially if they're buying it as a gift. Be very, very clear on how long it's going to take you to finish something. And because you have already done this 10 to 15 times, you should have a general idea of how long that'll take. The next thing is, because you already have a pretty general idea on the style that you paint and you've got the experience, you should have a better idea as well of what type of reference photo you can work from. This is a mistake that I see a lot, a lot of pet portrait artists do. If you're at a stage in your art career where you need a really, really high quality photo to get a high quality painting, then when someone hires you, you need to make that very clear to them if the reference photo they're providing to you is acceptable or not. Don't be afraid to tell people this photo, while it makes for a cute photo, it's not going to translate well into the painting or drawing. Don't just say, oh yeah, I can work from that. A lot of people are so afraid to lose a commission that they will agree to work from any photo. I mean, I've seen people where they'll take a photo, they're expected to get full detail in the face, but the photo is of a person standing across the yard. You can't see any detail, it's just kind of a blob at that point. Or photos taken with a flash. Pretty much never a good idea to work from. Or, you know, things like that. You need to have an idea of the angle that you're looking for. If you're doing pet portraits especially, a lot of people will take it, the photo angled down on top of the pet and that rarely looks good. So you need to be able to tell the person that you're not willing to work from certain photos. If that means you lose the job, great. It's a lot better to not get the job than to take the job, take the person's money, and have them not really happy because your painting didn't turn out very good. Another thing that I see happen a lot is artists will do samples. There was an artist who did a piece in colored pencil, did an amazing, amazing job. Like just absolutely beautiful, phenomenal. My jaw dropped when I saw this paint this piece. It was so gorgeous of somebody's dog. So another friend of mine hired her to paint her dogs thinking, oh my gosh, her work is so good. And the photo that my friend provided her with was not a good one. I took, when the friend showed me, I said, well, there's the problem right there. There's no way I would have worked from that photograph. You can't get the results she got in her first colored pencil piece from that reference photo that the 
the friend provided her with. The artist should have told her right up front, this photo won't work. I can't make this look like this other painting that I had done. And so now you've got a client who is extremely unhappy with that artist and will never buy anything from that artist again. You want to build a reputation for having very consistent work. So if your work is dependent, if the quality of your work depends on having a really good photo, require a good photo. If you have to tell the client, I need you to go get, get more photos of that dog or of that person, then do it. It's better to do that and like I said, possibly lose the commission than to take the money and have a nonstop battle when the person is not happy with your finished result. Now there will come a time in your artistic career where you can take a bad reference photo. You've painted hundreds and hundreds of dogs or hundreds of people and you can take a really bad reference photo or a mediocre reference photo and you know how the lighting and shadows should go to make that a good painting. But when you're first starting off, I really do recommend you be pickier about the reference photos that you're willing to work from. Next, getting into having a sort of contract. You need to agree before you start on the set amount of changes that you're willing to do in the painting. A lot of people like to continuously send the painting back to the person saying, can you adjust this? Can you adjust that? You say this a lot with when you design logos or like web design. Oh my gosh, the headaches involved there. You need to be very clear to begin with. I tell people you can make up to two adjustments within my initial estimate. If you can continuously need more adjustments after that, I'm going to charge you a set fee, whether that be $50 an hour or an extra $75 per adjustment. You know, you need to let those people know that because like I said, some people, they mean well, they're having fun with the whole process of having a custom painting done, but they will make adjustment after adjustment after adjustment to the point where it will just never end. So let them know as a part of your estimate that the price that you quote includes two adjustments or three, whatever, however many adjustments you, you're comfortable with and any beyond that cost additional. This just lets them know what to expect from you. Next, as a part of this contract, and your contract can be something as simple as the emails you've sent back and forth so you've got written confirmation of interaction with this person. You need to be very, very clear about how much the painting is gonna charge. A lot of people, especially new artists, they're very uncomfortable with coming up with a set fee or giving a definite price. I've seen people where they say, oh, it's gonna cost you around $200. No, you've seen their reference photo, let them know. Is it gonna cost 200? Is it gonna cost 300? Let them know your exact cost. Now when giving an estimate I can tell people that it may vary if they want different backgrounds but they should know before you even start painting the exact amount that you're going to be charging them. Raising and lowering the price is not okay unless it comes down to them continuously making changes and you've already agreed to how much you're going to charge per additional change. You need to take a deposit. I don't care if you are just starting off with taking commissions, you're a brand new artist, or if you've been doing this for 10 years. You need to take a deposit. This is going to filter out those people who think the idea of having a painting done is great until it comes time for them to actually pay for the painting and you're out the money. I think this has happened to every single artist at least once. And this doesn't mean that your painting wasn't good enough for them to pay for. It's just some people will hire someone to do something and then I don't know if it's something comes up on their end and they run out of money and they can't pay for it. Whatever the deal is, you need to require a deposit. That deposit, be very clear with them, this is non-refundable. That deposit's going to cover your cost of supply and a little bit of your time. Some people like to take a 50% deposit. I usually take a $100 deposit. It just lets you know who's serious about the process. And again, that deposit is non-refundable. So if they don't like the painting, they can't come up with the rest of the money, whatever it is, they don't get that money back and they don't get the painting unless they pay for the rest of whatever you had given them as an estimate. Next, how much did you charge? This is a question that I get asked all the time and there is no set, set like number I can give you. Really, whatever someone is willing to pay Pay is what your painting is worth. Best thing for you to do is to look for other artists who are painting things that are similar to your style, similar to your technique, your skill level in your area, or if it's like on websites that you sell it through, similar subject matter, whatever. Find people who are similar to you and see what they're charging. They should have a price list on their website. People who do not have set price lists generally don't get as many commissions as those who have a very clear price list laid out. A lot of people have the idea that if you have to ask somebody how much something costs, that it's gonna to be too expensive. So you wanna make sure that they know right off the bat, these are your prices. One of the things that I see a lot of newer artists do is they overvalue their work. They think, I saw a painting in a museum of a big blue dot and it was going for hundreds of thousands of dollars, so I should be able to charge thousands of dollars for my painting that's actually of something. Yeah, art really doesn't work that way. Because who you are and the name you've built for yourself is just as important, and in many cases more important, than the actual artwork you're producing. You're selling the artist as much as you are the art. So your painting is really only worth what somebody is willing 
willing to pay for it. And a lot of people will set the bar too high and think I'm going to charge thousands of dollars for this. It's not necessarily worth that much. And I don't mean to burst anyone's bubble, but in many cases, you're not there yet. You have to build up to that point. Now, if you can get people to pay that, more power to you, go for it. But most people aren't going to fall in that category. Some of it just has to do with who you know, too. If you know a lot of people who are willing to pay that much money for art, then that may work out for you. One of the things I will say, though, don't start yourself out at, like, start off charging a thousand dollars. And you get one or two commissions for that, but you're really not getting as many as you like, so you're going to drop the price to five hundred dollars. The people who had originally paid a thousand dollars are not going to be happy with you. That is not a reputation you want to build for yourself, where people think, well, if I would have waited, I would have gotten a better price. What you want to do is start low, start at like a hundred dollars, and if you're selling a lot, slowly raise your price until you hit up, up the point where you're comfortable in how many you're selling versus how much you're charging. But don't go backwards. Don't start high and start going low. Start low and then raise the price as you go. Next, Photoshop. This is one of the most amazing tools for an artist who is taking commission. I mean, it's ama an amazing tool for artists anyway, but seriously, learn it. If you don't know Photoshop and you're serious about doing commissions, you don't have to. You can, I mean, people for hundreds of years took commissions without Photoshop, but it will make your life so much easier and avoid so many problems. I can take, someone will send me a photo of their dog. I can try on 20 different backgrounds in Photoshop for the background of that painting, send it to the client, and they can get an idea of if they really liked blue because sometimes people will say well I want a blue background and you show them that dog does not look good let them see let them know what they're gonna get before you ever hit the canvas you can make adjustments like if it's a color photo you can make it black and white and show them how that'll look you can adjust your contrast again changing backgrounds is a big deal there's so many things you can do to adjust the photograph before you ever start painting so when someone hires me to do a painting I've made all of these adjustments beforehand they know exactly what they're gonna get from me before they even pay their deposit before any actual work is done. And because of this, it lets me avoid having somebody go, well, can you change this? I want this different. Can you adjust that as I'm painting? And there is nothing more frustrating than you've been working on a painting and somebody comes in and says, oh, well, I don't really think I like the green. Can you make it yellow? That is not so easy to do. But if they already knew that because you did a Photoshop sample, then your life is just made so much easier. And I know a lot of people get intimidated with the idea of using Photoshop or, or using some other photo editor, but it is so worth the time to learn. And you can figure it out yourself. I taught myself just trial and error. There are YouTube videos that'll teach you how to use different things and different techniques. You don't have to be amazing at it. You don't have to make something in Photoshop that's worthy of being printed. It just has to be good enough that the person can get an idea of what their painting will look like with the dimensions and all of that stuff. Even something as simple as cropping a photo. I can crop a photo and show them what it would look like if it was in portrait versus landscape, that sort of thing. It just really will save you a lot, a lot of headache if the client knows what they're getting from you before you start. There are a lot of artists who hate commissions and really get burnt out to the point where they don't want to paint anymore because of the nonstop drama that commissions can bring. But if you follow certain guidelines, like having people know what they're getting from you, being able to tell them, no, that reference photo isn't, I can't work from that, this sort of thing, this is going to avoid a lot of those headaches. I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings and drawings. I have my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, including this week. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this leopard and colored pencil. And I have vlogs most weekends, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those social media sites to keep up with news and my newest work. Hi guys, if you enjoyed this vlog, please let me know in the comments below or give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have ideas for topics for future vlogs, let me know that in the comments below as well. I'll see you guys later.